Yo, it's Ian Lewis. Now, it's late. I'm kind of tired. And this is kind of a last minute video, so forgive me. Today we're going to be doing another movie review. Um, this time of a movie I just watched, and I liked it so much that I want to do a whole video about it. And that is Copycat. This needs to be talked about more. I know it was a semi-big deal around when it came out, but I feel like no one talks about it. And I loved it. I loved this movie, so. 1995. Um, this was really, the, the 90s was really a decade of thriller. Now, 90s thriller has been talked about a lot more recently. And I think this should be talked about in that category a lot more. It's a thriller. It's a serial killer thriller. Which just rolls off the tongue. A serial killer thriller. Stars Sigourney Weaver and Holly Hunter. And pretty much Sigourney Weaver was like this detective girl who did these um, classes about like serial killers. Like what they, what they are usually. They're like, for example, like usually they're men between 20 and 30. You know, she did classes like that. Movie starts off with her doing a lecture and then going to the bathroom and getting almost murdered um by this other killer now it fast forwards like 13 months after that i believe and she has agoraphobia which means she will not leave her apartment she's been cooped up in there for over a year and she will not leave her apartment it follows holly hunter and dermot moroni and they are doing, they're both like detectives and they're doing a serial killer case. They're trying to connect everything together, right? And that's when um, Holly Hunter starts watching some, some videos of Sigourney Weaver's character doing lectures. And she wants her to help her with the case. Um, that's like the basic rundown. And obviously, seeing the title of the movie, Copycat, the killer is a copycat killer. Meaning he's copying actual serial killers like Dahmer, Gacy, um, Ted Bundy. He copies all those in here. Actually, I don't think he copies Gacy. Directed by John Amuel. Now, I think that's how you say his name. He hasn't done much. The, the thing that he's directed that I've heard about is The Man Who Knew Too Little. Which is this little comedy with um, Bill Murray. Let's talk about what I actually liked about the movie. Now, I like the mid-90s thriller feel for sure. And I know I haven't explored a lot of the 90s thrillers. Um, I've seen a couple. They have this certain feel to them. And I don't know why people don't put this in the 90s thriller conversation. Is it because it's more of a... A horror movie I mean I guess you could consider it that because of the serial killer aspect um, but that's one thing I loved about the movie and it takes place in San Francisco which you don't see a lot and I really love the environment it was beautiful like the nighttime scenes and everything it was beautiful immediately Sigourney, Sigourney Weaver won me over her performance is my favorite of the whole entire film now, reason being is, not only do I love Sigourney Weaver, I always have, even before I watched the, the Alien franchise, I've always loved Sigourney Weaver. Ghostbusters is my childhood, and I always loved her in Ghostbusters. Sigourney Weaver has so much little to work with and play with. She's this couch-ridden, PTSD-filled person. She doesn't leave her house. That's very strict to work with, and she did a damn good job giving off that badass energy while being at home. And she still feels very involved in the movie, in the story, even though she's not at these cr at the crime scenes with the detectives. All like the intense scenes, she's not really in them because she's at home. So they're like they're trying to put together this evidence with the caution tape, you know, all that jazz. And they're calling her over the phone, you know, and it's her performance sells. She sold it, man. She was so damn good in this movie. This is one of the best roles I've seen her in. Obviously, it's hard because of the roles that she has played. Like, as I said, Ghostbusters and Alien. I mean, come on, you can't beat Alien. But she was damn good in here. And Holly Hunter plays a good detective. It's kind of, I always, like, when I watch a movie with Holly Hunter in it, I can't not hear... Mrs. Incredible. 
I just can't, okay? I'm, other people are probably like that, so I couldn't really take her serious, because I just pictured the cartoon. If she had good emotional scenes, especially um, with what happens with Dormont Moroni. Mor 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 I can never say his freaking name. Dermot Moroni's character. He gets really emotional and it sells. It's not like the fake, cheapy, dramatic, emotional, like the... It's actually good emotional scenes from her. The killer is played by Harry Conrick Jr., which I'm not familiar with him. I didn't know who he was, but I guess he's a singer. Um, I'm sorry that I'm not familiar with that, but he played a damn good crazy guy. And he did a good job, like, just molding into the different personalities. Because, again, this killer copies other killers. So, it's very interesting how quickly he can change. Um, and how, like, unrecognizable. There's a scene where he's dressed as a cop. And I didn't know it was him until he killed somebody. And I was like, oh, that's him dressed up. It's like he just fits the character so well. Um, great performance from him. Very creepy and uneasy and unsettling. Of the negatives, there's one big one, and I kind of mentioned it before, but um, Dermot Moroni's character, I can't say that freaking name, but his character, I don't like how his character ended. I'm not going to spoil anything. You guys can probably assume what happens to him, but it was really dumb. This was just such a sour ending for such a fun, interesting character. And... He was like a bigger part of the of the movie. He was the heartthrob. He was the love interest of Holly Hunter. And he just... To, to nothing. To nothing. I did not like how his character ended at all. I, I It really kind of left a sour note on the whole movie for me. And I don't know why they ended it like that. But also, the whole final act was kind of eh. The final act is very predictable. I mapped it out in my head before it even happened, and that's how it happened. It goes out pretty much the beaten path, which is kind of unfortunate, but it's not a negative thing. Um, they worked with what they had. They ended it how they wanted to end it, but pretty much they end it with how it began. The same room where Sigourney Weaver, Weaver almost died, and the same way where she's tied up, and then how the, the movie ends with the killer... Um, and how his character ends, it was kind of anticlimactic. And for such like a strong, intimidating um, character that Harry Connick Jr. brought to the camera, it ended very, very, very unsatisfying. It was like, again, down the beaten path of how you would think his character would end. It was nothing very dramatic. Um, it was nothing like that I would talk about, like, oh my god, the ending was so great. It was just kind of meh. The rest of the movie really makes up for the movie and makes up for how much I enjoyed it. It is a lot of fun, and it runs at two hours and three minutes, so just a little over two hours. And I was worried that it was going to drag out. This flew by. Like, I put it on, and then it was over. And I was like, oh my god, that was really two hours? And it was two hours. This flew by like it was nothing, which is an immediate plus for me. That's how you know that I'm enjoying the film, if I feel like it's flying by. Because there's been plenty of times where I get kind of uninterested toward the end. So I'm so the ending's kind of foggy. That happens to me all the time. I, have, I don't want to blame ADHD, but that's probably why. <laughs> There's a lot of movies I saw where I'm like, okay, that was good, but I don't really remember the ending because I zoned out. Because it didn't, it didn't grip me. This whole movie gripped me, even if I didn't think the ending was amazing. I highly recommend Copycat, especially if you love those 90s thrillers. This is a really good one that I think people need to put into that conversation um, way more. I highly recommend Copycat. It's a great movie. I, especially if you love Sigourney Weaver, this is one of her best performances yet. I feel like other than Alien and Ghostbusters, this might, this may be her best performance. I'm giving Copycat a four out of five. I thought it was really damn good. And please talk about this more. I feel like this should be a cult classic or like a, um, maybe not cult classic, maybe not that high regarded, but just put it in your conversations more. Talk about it more. Share your love on this movie more, please. And if you saw it way back when it came out, rewatch it. Give it another shot. I think it holds up even more now. I should have said this. 
I forgot to say this, but um, the 90s vibes are there. I did actually say that, but there's a lot of technology in this film um, that has to do with like photo, not even Photoshop, whatever it was called back then, just photo editing. It's very, very, very dated. <laughs> And it's obvious how dated it looks. All the graphics on the monitors. It's very dated. But I really do think this movie works better now. It's weird how that works. Because while watching it, you're like, wow, this is so 90s. But I feel like it works better now. Obviously, back in the 90s, the whole serial killer thing was at its peak. All of those serial killers pretty much just ended or just got killed. Um, all that stuff pretty much wasn't too far from when this movie released. I'm surprised they haven't tried to do a sequel or a remake of this. Honestly, there's a lot of simple potential here. Now, the whole copycat killer thing, I'm sure was done before, but I really enjoyed this. If you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel and follow my Instagram at ianlives underscore. I hope you enjoyed the review. I hope I went over everything I wanted to go over. Um, and follow my letterbox at Ian. Hope you guys are enjoying the content. Thanks for 700 freaking subscribers. It's unbelievable, really. Um, and I love you guys, man.